Al-Tawbah, the repentance. This is a declaration of complete absolution on the part of Allah and His Messenger from all obligations to those of the polytheist with whom you had entered into a treaty, but they broke it repeatedly. So you may go about in the land for four months and know that you cannot frustrate Allah and know that Allah will humiliate the disbelievers. And this is a proclamation from Allah and His Messenger to the people on the occasion of the greater pilgrimage that Allah and His Messenger owe no obligation to these polytheists. If you, O polytheist, turn to Him in repentance, it is better for you. But if you turn away, then know that you cannot frustrate Allah. And proclaim, O Prophet, the news of a grievous punishment to these disbelievers, excepting those of the polytheist with whom you have entered into a treaty, and who subsequently did not fail you in any manner, nor did they back up anyone against you. So abide by the treaty you had entered with them to the end of the term you have fixed for them. Allah surely loves those who keep their duty. But when the prohibited four months, when no attack on the breakers of the treaties was permissible, have expired, slay such polytheists who broke their treaties wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and lie in wait for them in every place from which it is possible to perceive the enemy and watch their movements. But if they turn in repentance and keep up prayer and go on presenting the zakat, leave their path free. Indeed, Allah is great protector, ever merciful. And if any of the polytheists seeks your protection, grant him protection so that he may hear the word of Allah, then conduct him to a place where he feels himself safe and secure. That treatment is to be meted out to them because they are a people who have no knowledge. There can be no treaty on the part of these polytheists after their repeated violations of the same in the sight of Allah and His Messenger. This, however, does not apply to those with whom you have entered into a treaty near the Holy Mosque at Mecca. So long as they keep true to the treaty for you, you should also keep true in maintaining the treaty for them. Allah surely loves those who become secure against the breach of trust. How can there be a treaty with deliberate violators of agreements, while, if they get the better of you, they would respect no bond, nor words of honor in dealing with you? They would try to please you with mere words of their mouths, whereas their hearts dissent from what they say, and most of them are perfidious. They have preferred paltry gains to the revelations of Allah, and thus have turned people away from his path. Surely evil is what they do. They observe no bond, nor any word of honor while dealing with one who trusts them. It is these who are the transgressors. But if even such sworn antagonists turn in repentance and keep up prayer, and go on presenting the zakat, they are your brethren in faith and we explain the commandments in detail for a people who know. And if they break their oaths after they have ratified their pledge and revile and commit aggression against your faith, then fight such leaders of disbelief that they may desist. Indeed, solemn binding oaths have no value with them. Will you not fight a people who have broken their solemn oaths? and proposed to turn out the messenger and were the first to commence the fight against you? Are you afraid of them? Nay, Allah is more worthy that you should stand in awe of Him if you be true believers. Fight them. Allah will punish them at your hands and humiliate them and will grant you victory over them and He will heal 
the agonies of the minds of a believing people. And he may take away the suppressed rage of their hearts. And Allah turns with mercy to him who wishes him to turn to him with grace. Verily, Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Do you think that you will be left alone in peace while Allah has not yet distinguished those who strove hard for his cause from among you and who have taken no protecting friend apart from Allah and his messenger and the believers? Allah is well aware of what you do. It is not for the polytheists to keep the mosques of Allah in a good and flourishing state, while they bear witness to their own disbelief. It is these whose deeds have all gone in vain, and in the fire they shall abide. He alone keeps the mosque of Allah in a good and flourishing state, who believes in Allah and the last day, and observes prayer and goes on presenting the zakat, and holds none but Allah in awe. Therefore it is these alone who are likely to be among those who attain true guidance. Do you hold the giving of drink to the pilgrims and keeping the holy mosque in a good and flourishing state as equal to the deeds of him who believes in Allah and the last day, and strives hard in the cause of Allah? They are not equal in the sight of Allah. Allah guides not. To ultimate success, the people who have no sense of proportion. Those who believe and emigrate for the sake of Allah and strive hard for the cause of Allah with their possessions and their persons have the highest rank with Allah and it is these who are the triumphant. Their Lord gives them good tidings of great mercy from him, and of good pleasure, and of gardens obtaining lasting and abundant bliss for them. They shall abide therein for ever and ever. Indeed, Allah is he with whom there awaits a great reward. O you who believe, take not your fathers and brothers for allies, if they prefer disbelief to belief. And whoever of you ally themselves with them, it is then these who are the real wrongdoers. Say, if your fathers and your sons and your brethren and your mates and your kinsfolk and the belongings which you have acquired and the trade, the slump of which you fear, and the homes you love are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger and striving for the cause of Allah, then wait till Allah brings about his judgment. Indeed, Allah guides no sinful people to success. Allah has already helped you on many a battlefield and on the day of the battle of Hunain, when your multitude made you feel proud, but it availed you not, and the land with all its spaciousness became straitened for you. Then you turned back retreating. Then Allah sent down his Shekinah, upon his messenger, and upon the believers, and he sent down troops, which were not visible to you, and he punished those who disbelieved, and such is the recompense of the disbelievers. Yet after this punishment, Allah will turn with his mercy to him who wishes him to turn to him with grace, for Allah is great protector, ever merciful. O you who believe, the polytheists are spiritually altogether unclean, so they shall not come near the holy mosque after this year of theirs. And if you fear this will spell poverty for you, then rest contented. Allah will soon make you rich out of his bounty, if he will. Verily, Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Fight against such of a people who, despite having been given the scripture, do not really believe in Allah and the last day, and who do not hold unlawful what Allah and his messenger have declared to be unlawful, and do not subscribe to the true faith until they pay the jizya, the commutation tax, provided they can afford it and they are content with their state of subjection.
there are some of the Jews who say, Ezra is the son of Allah, while the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. These are mere words they speak. They only imitate the words of the infidels of old. Allah assail them, whither they are deluded away. They have taken their learned men and their monks for lords apart from Allah, and similarly they have taken the Messiah, son of Mary, whilst they were enjoined to worship none but one God. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. Too glorified is he for what they associate with him. They seek to put out the light of Allah with the breath of their mouths. But Allah disdains every other thing, save that he will perfect his light, however much the disbelievers may consider it hard. It is he who sent his messenger with the guidance and the faith of truth, that he may make it triumph over every other faith, even though the polytheists consider it hard. O you who believe, many of the learned men of the Jews and the Christian monks wrongfully appropriate the belongings of the people and turn the people away from and themselves forsake the path of Allah. Give the news of a woeful punishment to them and to those who treasure gold and silver and do not spend it in the cause of Allah. The day will come when these treasures shall be heated in the fire of Jehenna, and their foreheads and their sides and their backs be branded with it. And it shall be said to them, This is what you hoarded up for yourselves. Therefore suffer now the punishment for what you have been unlawfully treasuring up. Verily the number of months with Allah is twelve months in a year, according to the law of Allah, since the day he created the heavens and the earth. Of these, four months are sacred. That is the established law. Do not do injustice to yourselves by waging wars during these sacred months. And fight the polytheists all together in your defense, just as they fight you all together. And know that Allah is indeed with those who become secure against evil. The postponement of a sacred month to some other month is an excess committed in the days of disbelief. The disbelievers are led astray by this practice. They hold it lawful for waging a war one year and forbid it another year, thus adjusting the term of the ban prescribed by Allah and making lawful what Allah has made unlawful. The evil of their deeds has been made by Satan fair-seeming to them, and Allah guides not the disbelieving people in the ways of success. O oh, you, the so-called believers, what excuse have you that when it is said to you to go forth for the cause of Allah to Tabuk, you incline heavily towards the earth? Would you be contented with the present life in preference to the hereafter? If it is so, then remember that the provision of this present life, as compared with the hereafter, is but little. If you do not go forth on the expedition, he will make you endure a grievous suffering and will choose instead of you a people better than you, and you will do him no harm at all. For Allah is possessor of every power to do all he will. If you do not help him, then know Allah has already helped him when those who disbelieved turned him out from Mecca with only one companion, he being the second of the two when they were both in the cave, and when he said to his companion, Grieve not about me, surely Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his Shekinah upon him and helped him with troops which were not visible to you and he humbled the word of those who disbelieved to the lowest. And it is the word of Allah alone which is the supermost and so prevails. Allah is almighty, all wise. Go forth all whether light, being ill-equipped, 
or heavy, being well equipped, and strive hard with your possessions and your persons in the cause of Allah. That is better for you, if only you knew. Had it been an immediate gain and a short journey, these hypocrites would certainly have followed you. But the hard journey seemed too distant for them. Still, they will swear after your successful return by Allah, saying, If only we could, we would surely have marched forth with you. They spell their own ruin. Allah knows well that they are liars. Allah set your affairs aright and brought honor and glory to you since you pardoned the hypocrites. Why did you give them leave to stay behind? You should not have given them leave until you had clearly known those who spoke the truth and offered genuine excuses, and you had come to know the liars. Those who believe in Allah in the last day do not beg leave of you from striving hard with their possessions and their persons. And Allah is well aware of those who keep their duty to Him. They alone will beg leave of you who do not believe in Allah and the last day, and whose hearts are full of doubts, so overwhelmed by their doubts they waver. If they had really intended to go forth, they would certainly have made some preparations for the expedition. But Allah disliked their attending to their duty, and He held them back, and it was said to them, Remain back with those who stay behind. Had they set forth with you, O believers, they would have only added to your trouble, and they would have moved about hurriedly in your midst, seeking to create disruption among you. And there are some spies in your midst who would have listened to them on their behalf, and Allah is well aware of these wrongdoers. They already sought to create dissension before this, and they had been meditating plots to upset your plans till the truth became manifest and the decree of Allah prevailed, though they considered it hard. And among these hypocrites are those who said to you, Grant us leave to stay behind and spare us the trial. Behold, they have already fallen into the trial, and certainly Jehenna encompasses the disbelievers. If good befalls you, it grieves them, but if some hardship afflicts you, they say, we had indeed taken our precautions beforehand, and they turn away rejoicing. Say, nothing will afflict us but what Allah has ordained for us. He is our patron, and in Allah let the believers put their trust. Say, you only await for us one of the two good things, victory or martyrdom, while we await for you one of two evils to befall that Allah will afflict you with punishment either from himself or at our hands. Wait then, we are also waiting with you. Say, whether you spend willingly or unwillingly, this shall never be accepted from you, for you are indeed a people ever disobedient. And nothing prevents their contributions from being accepted except that they practically disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger, and they perform not the prayer, but lazily. They spend not in the cause of Allah, but reluctantly. So let not their riches, nor their children, make you wonder. Allah only intends to punish them therewith, in the present life, and that their souls may depart while they are disbelievers. And they swear by Allah, that they indeed belong to you, but they do not belong to you. On the other hand, they are too timid a people to appear in their true colors. Could they find a shelter or some caverns or any other place to enter into, they would certainly have turned their two rushing headlong. And some of these hypocrites are those who find fault with you in the distribution of charities. If they are given a share out of it, they are pleased, but if they are not given any share out of it, they at once feel offended. It would have been better for them if they had been well content with what Allah and His Messenger had given them, and had said, Sufficient for us is Allah. 
Allah will grant us out of his bounty, and so will his messenger. Surely to Allah alone do we turn in supplication. Compulsory charities are meant for the destitute and the needy, and for its functionaries, and for those whose hearts require to be consoled in all sincerity, and for the emancipation of the slaves, and for the relief of those in debt, and for spending in the cause of Allah, and for the wayfarer. This is an obligation imposed by Allah, for Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And among these hypocrites are those who talk ill of the Prophet, and say, He gives ear to all. Say, His giving ear to all is to your own good. He believes in Allah and trusts the faithful, and He is a great mercy for those of you who believe and there awaits a grievous punishment for those who talk ill of the Messenger of Allah. They swear by Allah to you to please you, O believers. If they were true believers, they should realize that Allah, as well as His Messenger, is more worthy that they should please Him. Have they not yet known that whosoever opposes Allah and His Messenger merits, of course, the fire of Jehenna, wherein he shall abide? That is the great humiliation indeed. Some of the hypocrites only pretend to fear that a surah might be revealed to them against them, that may acquaint them of what is hidden in their minds. Say, take it lightly if you must. Allah will surely bring to light what you simply pretend to fear. And if you thereupon ask them to explain their conduct, they will certainly say, We were talking idly and just making a jest. Say, Is it of the Almighty Being, like Allah and His revelations and His Messenger, that you dare to talk so lightly? Could you find none else for the purpose? Make no false excuses now. You have certainly disbelieved after your confession of belief. Even if we forgive one party of you, we will punish the people of the other party, for they are steeped in sin. The hypocrites, both men and women, are all strictly alike. They enjoin the wrong and forbid the right, and withhold their hands from spending for the cause of Allah. They have forsaken Allah, so He too has forsaken them. It is the hypocrites who have truly been the rebellious. Allah has promised the hypocrites, both men and women, and the disbelievers, the fire of Jehenna. They shall abide therein. It is sufficient for them. Allah has rejected them. And for them there awaits a long-lasting punishment. Say to hypocrites, you are like your predecessors. But they were mightier than you in strength, and richer in possessions and children. Then they enjoined their lot for a short time. So you too have enjoyed your lot as your predecessors enjoyed theirs. And you indulged in idle talk as they did. But remember, it is these whose deeds have gone in vain in this world and the hereafter, and it is these who are completely lost. Have they not heard the news of their predecessors, of the people of Noah, Ad, and Thamud? and of the people of Abraham, and of the dwellers of Midian, and of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which were overthrown, there had come to them their messengers of God with clear proofs, but they denied them and suffered the consequences thereof. So it was not Allah who dealt with them unjustly, but they did injustice to themselves. And the believing men and women both are friends one of another. They enjoin the right and forbid the wrong, and observe prayer, and go on presenting the zakat, and obey Allah and His Messenger. It is these on whom Allah will certainly have mercy. Surely Allah is Almighty, all wise. Allah has promised the believing men and women both gardens served with running streams they shall abide therein. And he has also promised them 
delightful and goodly dwelling places in gardens of eternity. And Allah's good pleasure is the greatest blessing of all. That is the most sublime achievement. O Prophet, strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and remain strictly firm against them. Their abode is Jehenna. What an evil resort it is. These hypocrites swear by Allah that they have said nothing wrong, whereas they had certainly spoke the word of blasphemy and took to the ways of disbelief after their having embraced Islam, and they meditated that which they could never attain, and they cherished hatred against believers for no other reason but that Allah and his messenger had enriched them out of his bounty. If they repent, it would be good for them. But if they remain averse, Allah will punish them with a grievous punishment in this world and in the hereafter, and they shall find neither a patron nor a helper in the entire land. Some among them are those who made a covenant with Allah, saying, If he grants us out of his bounty, we would most assuredly give alms and, and be certainly of the righteous after reforming ourselves. But when he granted them of his bounty, they hoarded it, and they went back upon their covenant, and they were averse to righteousness. Consequently, he has punished them by infesting their hearts with hypocrisy, lasting till the day they shall meet him. This was because they broke their word to Allah, which they had given him, and because they indulged in lies. Have they not known yet that Allah is aware of their hidden thoughts and their private counsels, and that Allah is fully aware of all hidden realities? It is the hypocrites who find fault with those of the believers, who give alms voluntarily and freely, and deride such believers who find nothing to contribute except their service or the meager fruit of their toil. Allah shall look down upon them for their derision, and for them is a grievous punishment. It makes no difference to them whether you ask protection of God from sins for these hypocrites, or you do not ask protection for them. Even if you ask protection for them seventy times, Allah will never protect them against the consequences of their sins. That is because they disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger and Allah guides no perfidious people to the ways of success. Those who were left behind in the Tabuk expedition because of their making false excuses rejoiced in their staying at home behind the Messenger of Allah. They found it hard to strive with their possessions and their persons in the cause of Allah. And they said one to another, Go not forth to fight in the heat. Say, the fire of Jehenna is even more intense in heat, if only they could understand it. Well, let them laugh a little now, as they have to weep much more to recompense for what they have wrought. Should Allah bring you safe and sound back from Tabuk expedition, and you meet a party of them, and they ask leave of you to go forth to join the next expedition with you, say, you shall never go forth with me, nor ever fight an enemy with me. You chose to stay at home the first time. Now stay with those who remain behind. Nor shall you ever offer janaza for any one of them who dies, nor stand by the grave of any one of them to pray. For they disbelieved in Allah and his messenger and died while they were still disobedient. And let not their possessions and their children cause you to wonder. Allah only intends to punish them in this life through them, and that their souls depart while they are still disbelievers. And when a surah is revealed, enjoining, believe in Allah and strive along with his messenger in the cause of Allah, even the well-to-do among them ask leave of you and say, Leave us alone to be with those who stay at home. 
they are pleased to be counted with the misbehaved and worthless folk, and a seal has been set upon their hearts so that they do not understand. But the messenger and those who believed with him strove hard in the cause of Allah with their possessions and their persons. It is these who shall have all the good things, and it is these who shall attain their goal. Allah has provided them gardens served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. Therein they shall abide. That is the sublime achievement. And those who make false excuses from among the Arabs of the desert came with the request that leave might be given them. And those who made false promises to Allah and his messenger stayed at home. There shall befall those who stuck to disbelief from among them a grievous punishment. For being unable to proceed on to defensive fighting, no blame lies on the weak, nor on the sick nor on those who find nothing that they could spend, provided they are sincere and true to Allah and His Messenger. There is no way of reproach against the doers of good to others, and Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Nor a blame lies on those whom, when they came to you, Prophet, with the request that you should mount them, you said, I find not whereon I may mount you. They then turned away helpless as they were, while their eyes were overflowing with tears of grief because they could find nothing that they could spend. Blame shall lie only on those who beg leave of you though they are rich. They have chosen to be numbered with the misbehaved and the worthless people, and Allah has set a seal upon their hearts so that they are not aware of their loss. These hypocrites will make false excuses to you when you return to them after the expedition to Tabuk. You should at that time say to them, Make no excuses. We shall never believe you. Allah has already fully informed us of all the facts relating to you. Allah will henceforth watch your conduct, and so will his messenger. Then at length you will be brought before him who knows the hidden as well as the manifest realities. He will then inform you fully about your deeds. When you go back to them, they will certainly swear to you by Allah that they had a genuine excuse, so that you may leave them alone without reproaching them. So leave them alone. Surely they are altogether unclean, and their resort is Jahanna, a deserving recompense for what they want to do. They will swear to you that you may be pleased with them. But even if you are pleased with them, they should know that Allah will not be pleased with the disobedient people. The disbelievers among the Arabs of the desert are the most stubborn in disbelief and hypocrisy, and the most prone not to know the limits of law which Allah has revealed to his messenger. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And some of the Arabs of the desert regard whatever they spend in the cause of Allah as an undue fine, and they wait for the calamities to befall you. On themselves shall fall an even worse calamity, and Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. And some of the Arabs of the desert are such as believe in Allah and the last day, and regard whatever they spend in the cause of Allah as means of bringing themselves close to Allah and of earning the blessings of the messenger. Listen, it is surely a means of bringing them close to him. Allah will certainly admit them to his mercy. Surely Allah is great protector, ever merciful. And as for the foremost in spiritual rank, outstripping others in faith and righteous actions, and the first to embrace Islam from among the immigrants, and the helpers, and those who follow their example in the best possible manner, Allah is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with Him. He has provided for them gardens served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. They will abide therein forever. That indeed is the most sublime achievement. 
some of the Arabs of the desert living around you and some of the people of Medina also are hypocrites. They persist in and are habituated to hypocrisy. You know them not, but we know them. We will punish them again and again in this life. Then they shall be made to revert to a greater punishment in the hereafter. And there are others among those who stayed behind, who have confessed their faults. They have linked up one good deed with another which is bad. So their deeds are both good and bad. Allah is likely to turn to them with mercy. Verily, Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Prophet, take a portion of their possessions as zakat, so that you may thereby purify them of their evils, and enhance them in their virtuous deeds, and pray for them. Your prayer is indeed a source of solace for them. And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Do they not know that Allah is He who accepts repentance from His servants and accepts their alms, and that Allah is He who is oft returning with compassion, ever merciful? And say, Go on doing as you like. Allah will surely keep an eye on your deeds, and so will His Messenger and the believers, and you will surely be brought back to Him who knows the hidden and the manifest realities then he will tell you all that you have been doing. And there are yet others among those who stayed behind, and whose case has been deferred, and who are made to wait for the decree of Allah. Maybe he punishes them, or maybe he turns to them with mercy. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And there are among the hypocrites those who have built a mosque to cause harm to Islam, and to promote disbelief, and in order to cause discord among the believers, and to provide a hiding place for him who had already made war against Allah and his messenger. And they will certainly swear, saying, We meant nothing but good in building the mosque, but Allah bears witness that they are certainly liars. Prophet Never shall you stand in that mosque for prayer. Certainly the mosque which was founded upon piety and observance of duty from the very first day is more worthy that you stand for prayer therein. In this mosque there are men, performers of prayers, who love to become purified. And Allah loves those who purify themselves externally and internally. Is he who founded his edifice on taking Allah as a shield and on his good pleasure better, or he who founded his edifice on the brink of a hollowed and crumbling water-torn bank, so that it toppled along with him into the fire of Jehenna? And Allah guides not the wrongdoing people in the ways of success. This building of theirs, which they have built, will never cease to rankle in their hearts unless their hearts are torn to pieces with anguish and repentance, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Allah has indeed purchased from the believers their persons and their possessions. Theirs in return is the heavenly garden. They fight in the cause of Allah, so they slay and are slain, an unfailing promise that He has made binding upon Himself, as mentioned in the Torah, and the Evangel, and the Qur'an. And who is more faithful and true to his covenant than Allah? Believers, rejoice over the bargain you have made with him, and this indeed is a great achievement. These believers are those who turn to Allah in repentance, who worship him, who praise him, who fast, who bow down before him, who prostrate themselves in prayer, who enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, and who keep the limits set by Allah. Proclaim to such believers good tidings of untold gifts in the heavenly garden. It is not proper for the prophet and those who believe that they should pray for protection for the polytheists who have died without repentance, even if they be their near kinsmen after it has become clear to them that they are the fellows of the flaming fire. 
and Abraham's praying for protection for his idolatrous sire was only because of a promise he had made to him. But when it became clear to him that he, his sire, was an enemy to Allah, he, Abraham, disassociated himself from him. Abraham was, as a matter of fact, soft of heart and forbearing. It is not for Allah to condemn a people as lost after he has guided them, unless he has made clear to them the things they ought to guard against. Surely Allah has full knowledge of everything. Verily it is Allah to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death. And you have, apart from Allah, no friend nor helper. Certainly Allah has turned with mercy to the prophet and to the emigrants and the helpers who stood by him in the hour of distress, after the hearts of some of the people were about to swerve from their duty. Again he turned to them with mercy. In fact, he is towards them most loving, ever merciful. And he also turned with mercy to the three companions of the prophet, Ka'ab, son of Malik, Hilal, son of Umayyah, and Murara, son of Rabi'ah, whose case was deferred for decree of Allah, until the earth for all its spaciousness became narrow for them, and their lives also became unbearable for them, and they were convinced that there was no refuge to escape the punishment from Allah save in him. Then he turned to them with mercy, that they might also turn with repentance to him. Surely it is Allah who is the oft-returning with compassion, the ever-merciful. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and be with the truthful. It was not proper for the people of Medina and for the Arabs of the desert who live around them to have stayed back from the messenger of Allah at the time of expedition to Tabuk, nor was it proper for them to have preferred their own lives to his. That is because they suffer no thirst, nor fatigue, nor hunger in Allah's way, nor do they make a journey which enrages the disbelievers, nor do they gain an advantage over an enemy, but a righteous deed is credited to their account in the record of deeds because of it. Verily, Allah suffers not the reward of the doers of good to be lost. Nor do they spend any sum, little or much. Nor do they traverse a valley, but it is recorded to their account that Allah may award them the highest reward for their deeds. It is not possible for the believers to go forth from their homes learning for religious learning altogether then why should not a party from every section of them go forth, that they may learn and become well versed in religion, and may warn their people when they return home to them, so that they too may guard against un-Islamic ways of life? O oh, you who believe, fight such of the disbelievers as dwell near to you, and let them find firmness in you, and know that Allah is with those who become secure against evil. And whenever a surah is revealed, there are some of these hypocrites who say scornfully, Which one of you has this chapter increased in faith? As for the disbelievers, it does certainly increase their faith, and they do rejoice. But as regards those in whose heart is a disease, it certainly adds more uncleanness to their previous uncleanness, and they die while they are still disbelievers. Do they not see that they are tried every year once or twice? Still they do not repent, nor would they take heed. And whenever a surah is revealed, these hypocrites look one at another as if to ask, Is anyone watching you? Then they turn away. Allah has turned away their hearts from the light because they are a people devoid of understanding. People. Certainly there has come to you a messenger from among yourselves. Your sufferings tell hard upon him. He is ardently desirous of your welfare, 
and he is very loving and merciful to the believers. But if they turn their backs upon you, say, Allah is sufficient for me. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. In him do I put my trust, and he is the Lord of the mighty throne.